U.S. calls on Armenia to reach final agreement with Azerbaijan for peace. The United States calls on Armenia to reach final agreement with Azerbaijan. James O'Brien, Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, told reporters while speaking about the results of the trilateral meeting between the Armenian Prime Minister, the U.S. Secretary of State and the President of the European Commission in Brussels. The meeting was about the reforms in Armenia, but we certainly encouraged it to continue on the path to peace and to try to reach a final agreement with Azerbaijan, O'Brien noted. According to him, the normalization of Armenian-Azerbaijani relations is the best way to ensure regional security and prosperity. In particular, it will open new trade routes from the Mediterranean region to Central Asia. It should be noted that the Armenian-Azerbaijani border has experienced the most peaceful period in the last six months. Currently, Armenia and Azerbaijan are closer to peace than ever before. However, meeting between the United States, the European Union and Armenia shows that the West is not sincere about regional peace and that it is trying to create new dividing lines and overlapping spheres of influence in the region. Because this meeting was prepared in a non-transparent manner, regional inclusiveness and character were not taken into account. Before the meeting, Secretary of State Antony Blinken called the President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and tried to explain the situation. In a telephone conversation with the President, Blinken said that this meeting was not against Azerbaijan, but was dedicated to the development of trade relations with Armenia. But any economic challenge of Paris, Washington and Brussels to Armenia cannot provide an opportunity for Armenians comparable to the Moscow market. Currently, Armenian products, capital and, most importantly, labor, have free access to the Russian market. The number of Armenians living in Russia is more than Armenians living in Armenia. Russian companies are the beneficiaries of Yerevan's main economic and transport infrastructures. The West, which is well aware of the history and complexity of relations between Armenia and Russia, does not see any prospects for economic cooperation with Armenia. The main goal is to open a new front against Russia in Armenia after Ukraine. This as creating a new source of conflict in the region and preparing Armenia for revenge against Azerbaijan. Russian control over Crimea, Sevastopol in question. Recently, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has presented the new heads of the Russian Navy, Northern and Black Sea fleets. Crimea.Rally media outlet. Actually, the admirals appointed to these posts were already acting as commanders, but Moscow preferred not to inform about Vladimir Putin's personnel decisions. It is noted that the very fact of the total change of fleet commanders is evidence that the Russian Navy has demonstrated its inefficiency and lack of modernity during the Russian-Ukraine war. One of the main narratives of Putin's aggression, control over Crimea and Sevastopol, has been questioned. The importance of the Black Sea Fleet staying in Sevastopol has always been one of the main political objectives of the Russian Federation, not only in Putin's time but also under Yeltsin. Sevastopol was perceived as the main base to dominate the entire Black Sea. However, the first major war has already demonstrated the failure of these plans. The Black Sea Fleet was not capable of interfering with Ukrainian trade and Sevastopol was constantly being hit by airstrikes, so much so that the Black Sea Fleet headquarters and other facilities had been turned from offices into targets. Russia has had to relocate part of its fleet urgently to an obviously unprepared bay in Novorossiysk and re-establish a reserve fleet in Ochamchira in occupied Abkhazia. It is clear that the responsibility in this situation should have been placed on the heads of the Russian Navy and Black Sea Fleet and not on Putin with his blitzkrieg plans and lack of understanding of how the world has changed. And this is despite the fact that in the past the Russian Black Sea Fleet could only fight against the weak, but when it was rebuffed it went down safely. But, as we know, Russian leaders have a peculiar relationship with history. Crimea.Rally says, It is noted that the question now is what tasks Putin will set before the new commander of the Russian Navy, Alexander Moiseev, and new commander of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, Sergei Pinchuk. Will he demand to preserve at least what is left, or to restore the fleet's capabilities in the Black Sea, block trade routes, and intensify strikes on Odessa, Ismail, and other Ukrainian ports? Knowing Putin's megalomania, Crimea.Rally leaned towards the second option. 
And this means that the Russian Black Sea Fleet will continue to look for trouble and lose ships, especially since the new scapegoats, who will be responsible for Putin's further disappointments, have already been appointed. Russia threatened to burn NATO military bases, Kremlin declared direct confrontation with alliance. Russia and NATO are now in direct confrontation, the Kremlin has declared, on the day the US-led military alliance celebrates its 75th anniversary. As NATO leaders and diplomats gathered for a ceremony in Brussels marking 75 years of the security bloc, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters in Moscow, in fact, relations have now slipped to the level of direct confrontation. NATO was already involved in the conflict surrounding Ukraine and continues to move towards our borders and expand its military infrastructure towards our borders, he said. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Western countries are trying to compel all NATO member states to sign up for providing obligatory aid to Ukraine just so long as Kiev keeps up its fight against Russia. Now they want to turn voluntary military aid to Ukraine into mandatory military aid under NATO auspices. To force all NATO members to sign up for the obligatory provision of funds and weapons to the Kiev regime through heavy-handed disciplinary measures just so that it can continue to fight Russia. The top diplomat said at a meeting with foreign ambassadors on a potential settlement in Ukraine. Bases of the North Atlantic Alliance in Ukraine, if any, are ever deployed to the former Soviet Republic, will be Russia's legitimate target and will burn, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander Grushko told. These bases will burn. There once was the Yavarovsky training ground on Ukrainian soil where NATO had been training its troops. That target was absolutely legitimate, the Russian diplomat said, when asked how Russia would react were the North Atlantic Alliance to resume training troops in Ukraine or deploying repair centers there at Kiev's request. Russian President Vladimir Putin said earlier that today, the military potential and capabilities of almost all major NATO countries are being actively used against Russia. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu emphasized that Moscow was fighting not so much with the Ukrainian military as with the collective West.